Hello there, my name's Tony Range. Um, this is the house I live in, it's a roundhouse. Built it 15 years ago and I live here with my partner Faith. Um, I've been asked occasionally to build roundhouses for people. Usually there's a kind of woodland shelter or something like that, but the principle's the same. So I'm going to go through it with you, simply, so that you could, if you want to, build something fairly cheaply. This costs 3000 most of the houses I build are are cheaper than that or about the same price and so we're talking not too much money. So we start with the site in the forest of Dean bounded by a river to the north little stream to the west land falls away on all sides except the east. Here we're making a few tools. Uh, this is a mallet. This is uh, preparing the first arch which are two uprights joined by a cross piece and also a cross piece about 10 centimeters up from the ground checking it's square at every point and also if you can find a level piece of ground it's helpful there's the the uh, first circle as you can see uh, this, there will be a, a stem wall around the outside of the circle of stones which are now level and the first arch is being prepared in the center of the circle. Here we've got the first arch again on the right hand side you can see that uh, there's a cross piece with uh, its two faces that will be facing upwards and that'll be fixed by coach bolts to the uprights again being kept square. Here's Mike uh, flattening and pressuring the ground on, on the outside of the circle of stones to take a stem wall approximately 30 centimeters high all the way round on which we'll place the cobwood wall. Here's the stem wall coming taking shape. There's a bit of urbanite ordinary uh, stone that's been taken from a building site plus stone taken from on site. In this particular case we had almost all the wood and almost all the stone uh, available on site so it's quite a cheap build in terms of materials. Here's the first arch up. It's braced with diagonals that are just temporary of course. There'll be six of those put up and then we'll have the cross pieces facing down with cross pieces uh, joining those arches to form the full henge. Here's one, the first facing down cross piece being assessed against two of the initial arches. It's quite a f fancy job getting the angle right, as you can imagine, so it takes a bit of time. There's a bit of detail there. You can see the arch on the right is braced using threaded bars and he's measuring the angle of the uh, cross piece on the left. This is using a cross piece as a lintel for the front door, uh, which is quite a fancy piece of wood. You'll see it later in position. So it's being held by one person. Two people are using a saw to get a fairly accurate cut there. Here's the hinge standing with its fancy front lintel of order. All the uprights are order and the cross pieces are order from about 50 meters away so it's a pretty good cheap source of materials. The whole thing is about four and a half meters across. You notice that all the alder has been stripped of its bark. Looks quite good and consistent that way. Here's a detail of one of the joints. The right hand bit of the cross piece is the downward facing and the left hand is the upward facing. Notice they're all st standing on the upright as well so that's a fairly fancy joint. Here's putting the first rafter on. We use a charlie stick which is a kind of scissors arrangement of two poles and then a three pole arrangement of a tripod with rungs lashed to it and here Ruth is holding the first rafter in place and tying it onto the charlie here is the fourth rafter going up. Each, each rafter is tied to the next one and they're also tied down onto the henge 
more detail of this on livinginthefuture.org stroke 43 if you're interested in the detail of how to put up one of these reciprocal frames. Now leaping forward a few more hours in time uh, the Charlie has been removed, the tripod has been removed, all the rafters are sitting on each other as a reciprocal frame, they're tied together, they will be bolted in a minute and we can start putting sarking, i.e. wood spares, on the rafters. Here's the rafters all uh, lying on each other and being bolted together. Here's the roof being worked on by a lot of people now and the walls. Full, full team working there. Uh, sarking is going up to the top. The rafters have yet to be trimmed. The eaves are just being started, the fascia there. And Billy is starting on the left here making cob, which is two and a half parts sand, one part clay, and a bucket or so of chopped straw. There you can see the fascia all done and working on the roof to bring the wood up to the level of the rafters. On top of that we will be putting carpet, then plastic, then more carpet, uh, then turf on top of that. Here's the view through the skylight. Walls are coming up now, cob between the big rounds of wood, Thuya is the wood. Here it is from the inside, then from the outside you can see that they're quite carefully chosen to look good. Uh, if this was a house you could also put insulation in the middle of the wall like wool. Here's the turf going on top of the last layer of plastic. That bit of pipe there you can see is drainage pipe taking the water, surplus water, down to the back where it'll vent into the river. Turfs are from about 20 meters away. Now here's Billy making adjustments to the wall with the washing machine windows. These make great little portholes for children to look through. There's one on, there's three of them in fact, round the back. Here's another one from the other side. And you can also see the uh, alder supports for the back of the roof, where it's uh, longer and heavier, and where the water will run off to the river. Here's a nice use for blue bottles. If you put the neck into a jam jar and tape them together to make a sort of log shape, you can put it in the walls and put the jam jar on the outside to catch the sun strategically. This is in the southwest, so that it lights up when the sun hits it. And here's the hole where the children can climb through. Here's the pattern from the outside, and notice the pointing around the logs to make it look aesthetically pleasing. Here's the hole from the outside looking in. These large logs are pinned together with long screws. And now we also come to fitting the windscreen on the roof. The windscreen sits on the turf above uh, and is held down by straps that are put down under the turf. So here are just a few more pictures of the finished product. The whole thing took 10 days to do a group of about 15 people. There's a windscreen to fit on there, on the bit of the roof still. A few bits of wall to finish, but here we all are at the end of 10 days. And thanks for watching.